Okay, so completing the square. You guys had a completing the square problem on your quiz? Yeah. yeah. Did you guys have a completing the square problem on your first quiz? Yeah. Do you think that might be a good idea to think there might be a completing the square problem on your test? Yeah. No. Yes, well, yeah, and you might be right, but should you probably prepare for one? Are yes. Be on the test? Uh, 25. So let's go ahead and group your x's and your, I really have no idea actually. Uh, I think it's actually like 15 or 13. Um, so it's one in, in between there. One day. So the main important thing we want to do in this case, guys, is group your variables. So we group your 4y squared minus 24y minus x squared minus 4x equals negative 16. Usually everybody does good on that side. But then we recognize, we say, oh, remember we can't complete the square unless our coefficients are equal to a positive 1. So what we have to do is factor out a 4 out of this one. and factor out a negative 1 out of this one. And that's that negative 1 where usually everybody makes the mistake. You wouldn't do the over 2? Not yet. You have to, well, you can't do that yet until you have, in, you have your coefficients of 1. So do you see how now inside the parentheses they have a coefficient of 1? Now you do the b over 2. Okay? So when doing that, I'll just take negative 6 divided by 2 squared, which equals 9. Over here, I do 4 divided by 2 squared, which equals 4. So now let's go and add these in. So 4y squared minus 6y plus 9. Minus 1 times, I know, but I like the colors. Because this is where the colors come in really handy, is right here. Because remember, whatever you do on the left side, you have to do on the right side. So we, since we added a 9, add a 9 there, but it's multiplied by that 4. And then we, that's a 4, right? Yeah. Two. What? No. He wrote it wrong. Oh, it's gotcha. written right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Now it's good. Yeah. Right. Now it's good. Yeah. I was like confused. I was like, there's no negative. Yeah. Four. There's no negative one. Well, there's that. There's this negative yeah, one. Yeah. And not that. And this is the one where people make the mistake. So just remember, guys, doing that. Whatever you do on the left side, you do on the right side. And just remember, you can't complete the square unless you factor out those yeah. terms. And usually everybody remembers the four because that's what we did for the ellipse. But everybody usually forgets about the negative because it's been a while since we had to factor out a negative, just like a negative 1. So just remember that one because that's a big common mistake. So now I'll go back to one single color. And we'll group this down. So that's 4 times x minus 3 squared minus x plus 2 squared equals, let's see, that's 36 minus 3. So that's uh, 20 minus 4. So that's equal to positive 16. Thank you. So now you divide this all by 16, and you get y minus 3 squared over 4 minus x plus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. And I didn't even solve my problem, Dong Hill. Didn't even do anything. All I did was complete the square. But I'll answer these fairly, fairly quickly, because I'm just going to kind of do this in my head. But the main thing, before I can even do this in my head, yes? Because you have to divide 16 into that and 16 into that. There's a 4 here. 4 over 16 reduces to 1 fourth. Okay, I got it? So let's find the center. The center here is at negative 2, negative 2, positive 3. Right? My a squared is under my y. That means my transverse axis is vertical. So let's sketch that in there. Okay. Um, let's see here. My a squared is not 16, but it's 4. So that means a equals 2. My b squared is 16, so that means b equals 4. And my c squared is 20, so therefore c equals the square root of 20. 
which you guys should be very familiar with. Simplified radical is 2 squared of 5. All right, so now from my center, I'm going up and down, right, to find my vertices. So let's label my center again. Center is negative 2, 3. So, yes? Well, then we'll go over the answers and get them right. So the center is negative 2, 3. But remember, we're going up and down for my vertices, up and down A. And A is 2. So my vertices is going to be negative 2, comma 3, plus or minus 2, which really, guys, we don't need to be lazy. We can write that in there, which is going to be negative 2, 5, and negative 2, 1. My uh, foci is going to be plus or minus C. So therefore, from negative 2, 3, you're going up and down, 2 squared of 3. So that's going to be negative 2, comma, 3, plus or minus 2 squared of 5. And then my asymptotes, the equation for your asymptotes of a vertical transverse axis is y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. It's the exact same equation, guys, except it's a over b instead of b over a. Say it at night five times and you got it. So do I know my A and I know my B? Yes. Do I know my H and I know my K? Yes. So my asymptote is Y equals plus or minus A over B. So that's 2 over 4, which is 1 half. X minus H, which is X plus 2. Minus K, which is plus, or plus K, which is plus, or minus plus 3. All right, sorry. Um, next class period won't be as bad, hopefully.